Hi, and welcome to our online discussions. Before watching the video, I only have two simple requests for you. First is to get a paper or a notebook and jot down all the important ideas that you need to know. Second is to focus. Happy learning! For this video, we're going to talk about all of the discussions and lessons for week 2. Let's now proceed to Rizal and the Chinese Mestizos. Rizal is a fifth generation Chinese Mestizo. However, he and his father were considered as Indios. There are some documents in scholarly papers noted that Rizal disliked being called Chinese Mestizo or Chinoy and he associated himself from any Chinese relations. Through his novels No Limitang and El Filibusterismo, Rizal exposed the abuses and corruption of the Spanish authorities, condemned the oppression of the people by the colonizers, and ridiculed the hypocrisy and overbearing attitude of the Spanish friars. He also depicted the bloody revolution that sparked pe people's fury and eventually lead them to revolt. At the same time, as a sign of his contempt towards Chinese immigrants in the Philippines, his novels brimmed with insults and scorn for them. Rizal clearly manifested his anti-Christian feelings in his writings, as well as his correspondence with family and friends. By virtue of his lineage, Rizal could have had a special connection with the Chinese, but such was not. But such was not the case. I'm so sorry for typographical errors. I'm just going to correct this in your uh, handouts. The concern on whether Rizal's disdain over his Chinese lineage made him less of a hero is not something to argue ab about. Chinese mestizo or not, Rizal is a nationalist and a Filipino. Let us now proceed to lesson 2, Rizal's family, childhood, and early education. So for now, we have Rizal family. So Rizal family is a wealthy family in Calamba, Laguna. So they are considered as one of the largest families during those times. So they have 13 members. They have, uh, Rizal has, and of course, a father and a mother. He has nine brother, nine sisters and one brother. So he also has his paternal ascendant or Domingo Lamco, a full-blooded Chinese who lived in Amoy, China. He arrived in the Philippines in the closing years of the 17th century and married to a Chinese half-breed, Ines de la Rosa. So the Mercado Rizal family had also Japanese, Spanish, Malay, and Negrito blood. Uh, Francisco Mercado is Rizal's family, so he is the youngest of 13 children of Juan and Cirilla Mercado. He was born in Binyan, Laguna, and studied in San Jose College of Manila and died in Manila. So the parents of Jose Rizal were both farmers who were granted by the Dominicans with the lease of Hacienda together with the rice farm. Meanwhile, Rizal's mother is Teodora Alonso Rialonda. She was a business-minded, religious, and hard-working person. Teodora was born in Santa Cruz, Manila on November 14, 1827 and died in Manila in 1913. She studied at the Colegio de Santa Rosa and was the second child of Brigida de Quintos and Lorenzo Alonso. Teodora Alonso had Spanish and Japanese ancestors while her father was a half-Spaniard engineer known as Lorenzo Alberto Alonso. These are Rizal's siblings. We have Saturnina, Pasiano, Narcisa, Olympia, Pia, Lucia, Maria, Concepcion, Josefa, Trinidad and Soledad Rizal. So Tornina Rizal is married to Manuel Timoteo Hidalgo of Tanawan, Batangas. So Tornina is the eldest. Next is Pasano Rizal, who is the only brother of Pepe or Jose, who studied at San Jose College in Manila. He, he became a farmer and later a general of the Philippine Revolution. Next is Narcisa Rizal, or the third child. He married Antonio Lopez at Morong. Rizal. She is a teacher and a musician. Next is Olympia Rizal. She is married to Silvestre Ubaldo and she died in 1887 from childbirth. Lucia Rizal is the fifth child. She married Matriano Herabosa. The sixth child is Maria Rizal 
who is married to Dariel Faustino Cruz of Binyan, Laguna. The second son and the seventh child is Jose Rizal. He was executed by the Spaniards on December 30, 1896. Next to Jose Rizal is Concepcion Rizal, who is the eighth child and died at the age of three. That's why I was not able to find any picture of her. Next is Josefa Rizal, who is an epileptic and died a spinster. Next is Trindad Rizal, who is the 10th child. She also died a spinster and the last of the family to die. The youngest is Soledad Rizal, who married Pantalion Quintero. Meanwhile, the paternal ancestors of Rizal are the following. So we have Domingo Lamco, the family root, who arrived from Amoy, China in 1660s and changed his name to Mercado in 1697. Yeah, he married late in life. Next is Francisco Mercado y Cinco. He's the first son of Domingo Lamco. Next is Juan Mercado y Monica. He's the youngest son of Francisco Mercado y Cinco, a family, or sorry, a, cap a captain in the Spanish army. Petrona, Potenciana, and Francisco Mercado Sr. are children of Juan Mercado. The youngest is Francisco Mercado Sr. and the father of Jose Rizal. Meanwhile, the influential relatives of Jose Rizal are the following. These relatives influenced him greatly, mostly consisted of his mother's brothers, Tio Jose, Tio Manuel, and Tio Gregorio. Tio Jose is the youngest among the siblings of Theodora and was schooled in Calcutta, India. He was Jose Rizal's inspiration as he sketches and paints. Tio Jose encouraged him to engage in sculpturing. Meanwhile, Tio Manuel is known to be big and strong. He influenced Jose to visit the outdoors, do long walks with his pet black dog Usman, and even go horseback riding with his horse Castanio. Tio Gregorio taught Jose the value of hard work, careful observation of life, as well as independent thinking. Through him, Jose likewise became interested in the printed page. Jose's first teacher was his mother. So at the age of three, Jose learned the alphabet and prayers from her mother. Seeing Rizal had a talent for poetry, her mother encouraged him to write poems, and she gave all that she learned during college. Meanwhile, Jose also had a private tutor named Leon Monroy, who taught him the rudiments of Latin. Aside from Monroy, Jose was also taught by his uncle Manuel Alberto and uncle Gregorio. So the former was concerned with the physical development of, of Jose, that's uncle Manuel, and instilled him and instilled in him the love for nature, while the latter taught him the value of education. So that's Uncle Gregorio. Jose had his early education in Calamba and Bifian. His education was focused on reading, writing, arithmetic, and religion. So instruction was imposed very rigidly and strictly. Teachers made use of whips to force knowledge into the minds of the students. Uh, during that time, pinapalo or hinahampas nila yung mga bata. Uh, during learning. However, despite the shortcomings of the Spanish system of basic education, Rizal was still able to acquire the necessary skills to prepare him for higher education in Manila. Jose's first teacher in Bifian was, was Maestro Justiniano Aquino Cruz, who he described as tall, thin, long-necked, sharp nose, and with a body slightly bent forward. In Bifian, Jose regularly attended mass went to the orchard, went to class at 10 a.m., and ate lunch, arrived home at 5 p.m., and consist consistently studied and drew. He also prayed daily before going to bed. In short, Rizal has a system that he follows during that time. Rizal's influences. So aside from the relatives that were uh, mentioned earlier, Rizal grew up surrounded by influences that have contributed to the development of his nationalist sensibilities. From his father, Francisco, Rizal learned the value of self-respect, love for work, and independent thinking. Meanwhile, his greatest influence was his mother, Teodora. It was from her that Jose got his religiosity, a high sense of self-sacrifice, and love for the arts. His love for freedom and justice was inculcated in him by Pasiano, while his sisters taught him to be respectful and kind to women. So si Pasiano bilang kanyang kuya ay napakalaki ng impluensya 
sa katauhan ni Rizal. He got his book, his love for books and his being hardworking from his uncle Gregorio. His uncle Jose encouraged him to develop his skills in painting, sketching, and sculpting. So an equally important influence on the character of Rizal was the environment he grew up in. As mentioned, he spent his childhood in Calamba, in a family that nurtured his mind and soul. The Rizal family had a beautiful garden which he helped Rizal appreciate nature. So these things stimulated the young hero's innate artistic and literary talents. Sa lahat ng aspeto na alam ni Rizal, malaki ang naging uh, role ng kanyang pamilya at ng kanyang mga kamag-anak. So we now have the history of the Friar Lands. So the existence of Friar Lands in the Philippines can be traced back to the early Spanish colonial period when Spanish conquistadors were awarded lands in the form of hacendas for their loyalty to the Spanish crown. So this is the encomienda system. Approximately 120 Spaniards were granted either large tracts of land called Sitio de Ganado Mayor or smaller tracts called Caballerias. However, the Hacenderos failed to develop their lands. One reason is that the Spaniards were not expected to permanently stay in the Philippines. Many of them returned to Spain once they were done serving in the country. Also, the livestock market during this time was still small. Thus, the galleon trade based in Manila appealed more to the Spaniards because it offered better economic opportunities. The Spanish friars were able to acquire land through whatever means available, available to them. According to sources, lands were donated to the friars in exchange for spiritual favors. Many Filipinos believe that the friars had no titles to the lands they owned because they acquired them through usurpation and their other and other dubious means. Sabi ng ibang historians, walang titulo ang mga Spanish Spanish friars dahil inaangkin lamang nila ang mga lupa na meron sila. When the export of agricultural crops started to blossom in the 18th century, the, the inquilinato system was put into place. In this system, one who rented land for a fixed annual amount or an inquilino was expected to give personal services to the landlords. If he or she failed to do so, he or she would be expelled from the land. So the inquilinos could also lease the land they were renting from the landlord to a kasama or sharecropper, who would then be responsible for cultivating the land. In short, the inquilinato system functioned as a three-layered system, with the landlords on top, the inquilinos in the middle, and the kasamas at the bottom. Let us now proceed to Hacienda de Calamba dispute. The Hacienda de Calamba was originally owned by a Spaniard who donated the land to Jesuit friars to allow him to permanently stay in the, Jesu in the Jesuit monastery. However, since the Jesuits were expelled from the Philippines, the Hacienda went to the possession of the Spanish colonial government. So in 1803, the land was sold to Don Clemente de Azanza. After his death, it was eventually sold to the Dominicans who claimed ownership of the Hacienda until late 19th century. Rizal's family became one of the principal inquilinos of the hacienda. So they, rented some, they rented one of the largest leased parcel of land measuring approximately 380 hectares. The main crop was sugarcane since it was the most in demand in the world market then. The Rizal family got their income mainly from the land they rented. However, when conflicts on the land ownership in the hacienda arose, in 1883, the family evidently suffered. That's it for our discussion today. I hope you were able to understand our lessons. If not, you can always go back and replay the videos. I hope you're doing well. Thank you for watching. God bless.